Putin to interfere in presidential elections in U.S. Russian President Vladimir Putin will interfere in the 2024 U.S. presidential election, states Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council of Ukraine, Oleksiy Danilov. According to him, artificial intelligence has allowed Russia to significantly intensify its disinformation campaigns, which is a huge step forward for Moscow. The Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council is convinced that the scale of information interference will be much larger than before. Russia now has special units dedicated to every country where elections are taking place. The network of informants and agents of Moscow around the world is so large that removing Russian interference is impossible. The FSB continues to contract with European criminal groups, Danilov noted. The Times states that Russian agents spread 166 million pieces of disinformation about Ukraine weekly on various platforms. The presidential election in the U.S. is scheduled for November the 5th, 2024. According to forecasts, the main candidate for the Democrats will be the incumbent American leader, Joe Biden. The Republicans will nominate either Donald Trump or former U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley. White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan recently stated that the White House is concerned about possible Russian interference in the 2024 presidential election. NBC News reported that Russia is already spreading disinformation ahead of this year's U.S. elections. Fake accounts and bots are being used to harm President Joe Biden and his Democratic colleagues. Putin responded to Biden's insult, calling it a great shame for the U.S. President Joe Biden called his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin a crazy SOB at a public fundraising event in California. We have a crazy SOB like that guy Putin and others. And we always have to worry about nuclear conflict, but the existential threat to humanity is climate. Biden said in a brief speech at the event in San Francisco that was attended by a small group of reporters. In a hot mic slip in January 2022, Biden similarly called a Fox News journalist a son of a bitch. Biden's burst of strong language follows other occasions in which he has called the Russian president who ordered the invasion of Ukraine in 2022 a butcher and a war criminal. The Kremlin slammed Joe Biden's use of shameful language. This is a huge shame for the country itself, for the US. If a president uses that kind of language, it's shameful. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said. He remarked that Biden's statement was a poor attempt to appear like a Hollywood cowboy. A brief report on the Russian state news agency TASS website quoted Peskov as saying, Biden's words about Putin cannot hurt the Russian president, but they are a disgrace to the United States itself. Peskov said, the use of such language against the head of another state by the president of the United States is unlikely to infringe on our president, President Putin, but it debases those who use such vocabulary. Peskov said the remark was probably some kind of attempt to look like a Hollywood cowboy. But honestly, I don't think it's possible. Has Putin ever used one crude word to address you? This has never happened. Therefore, I think that such vocabulary debases America itself, Peskov said. He later added in comments to a state television reporter, this is a disgrace for the country itself. I mean the United States. Russians sent 70-year-old T-55 tanks to attack Robotine. It ended badly. After a brutal four-month defense against a Russian force 10 times its size, the Ukrainian army's 110th mechanized brigade last Friday finally quit the ruins of Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine, just northwest of Russian-occupied Donetsk, according to Forbes. The 110th Brigade fought until it ran out of ammunition. It is noted that sensing weakness as the 110th Brigade retreated, the Russian army attacked in several sectors along the 600-mile front of Russia's two-year wider war on Ukraine. But not every Ukrainian brigade is as tired, outnumbered and ammo-starved as the 110th is. Ukrainian forces not only held the line last weekend, they inflicted heavy casualties on the overconfident Russian brigades and regiments, including at least one unit that tried to assault Ukrainian positions in the south in unupgraded 70-year-old T-55 tanks. 
That unit, apparently from the 42nd Motor Rifle Division, got wrecked as it crossed from west to east, a mile of flat terrain separating Russian lines from positions held by the Ukrainian Army's 65th Mechanized Brigade in Robotyne, one of the larger settlements the Ukrainians liberated last summer. The 65th Brigade threw everything it had at the Russian assault group, which numbered dozens of 41-ton, four-person T-55s, 13-ton MT-LB armoured tractors with room for 13 people and 13-ton BMP fighting vehicles with space for 11. Firing cluster shells and anti-tank missiles and flinging explosive first-person view drones, the 65th Brigade defeated the attack and exacted some revenge for the men and women of the 110th Brigade who died defending Avdiivka, according to Forbes. As the dust settled, open-source analyst Andrew Perpetua counted all along the front line 28 damaged, destroyed and abandoned Russian tanks and fighting vehicles. He counted just six damaged, destroyed and abandoned Ukrainian tanks and fighting vehicles.